No one, not even your parents, would want to see that. All right, so let's get things popping with our first episode of today. It is a banger, a classic. I loved this episode back when I was little cartoon Cory, and it's Culture Shock. For those who don't remember it, here's a hilarious scene from the episode. Dude, this episode was such a massive part of my childhood, and I'm sure it was a massive part of yours as well. But I'm sorry, guys, I kind of got to ruin your childhood right now because this episode has two mistakes. Take a look at this. Don't worry, Squidward. I'm going to come up with the most cultured act ever. The only culture that guy has is in his tennis shoes. Ha! <laughs> ha! Tennis shoes. Ha! <laughs> the Krusty Krab Tower Show takes you the finest time. Wow! A full house! <gasps> There's mom and dad. Hello, I'm Mr. Krabs, and I like money. Okay, so take a look at this, guys. This clock right here, it's on top of these doors, all right? And it's present throughout the episode for the most part, but not really, that's actually the mistake. As before the talent show, it just randomly disappears. It's there, but then before the talent show, it just disappears, and then it later reappears later on during Gary's poetry. So yeah, a bit of a continuity error here. There was the clock, it's gone, and then it's back. So yeah. And guys, there's another mistake in this episode that's even worse. Take a look at this and here's a little hint. It has to do with the curtains. Uh, uh, good evening and, and welcome to the first annual Squidward Tentacles Talent Show. Ah! Hey Squidward, listen, what do you think? When I mop, should I go forward and back? No, no, wait, side to side. And now, poetry by Gary. So like I said, those curtains, right? There's a massive mistake here. So at first, they look like this. They're red, as you can see right here. But then, during the actual talent show, the curtains change colors throughout the episode. They change to green at one point, and then they change to purple, when originally they were red. So it goes red, green, purple. Yeah, talk about a mistake, dude. And guys, stay tuned as the next mistakes we're going to be talking about are even worse, dude. Let's keep it moving. Another sneaky Spongebob mistake can be found in the iconic and very nostalgic season 3 episode, SpongeGuard on Duty, an episode all about Spongebob, filling in for Larry the Lobster, and taking on the role of Goo Lagoon lifeguard. Just the only issue is, our boy Spongebob can't even swim. I swear man, one of these days Spongebob is gonna get somebody killed. Now the mistake in question can be found during this scene, the ice cream scene. So as you can see, Incidental 41 is shown with a yummy cherry red popsicle. As you can see, it's red, very important, okay? Perfect for a hot summer day. However, in the very next shot, his popsicle is now magically blue, thus making for a really weird mistake. I mean, hey, blue raspberry is just as yummy as a flavor, but this was definitely a mistake. It was a red one before. Now y'all have to wait one hour before you go swimming. But just so you're not tempted. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is the season 12 episode, Farmer Bob, which is, in my opinion, a good season 12 episode. I actually enjoyed it, but before we get into the mistakes, here is a really funny clip from this episode. I'm gonna make it real quick, guys. Their final chore is harvesting my coat pants. Mm. That'll take forever. Not if you use my tractor. But, but I don't have a tractor license. I got lots of licenses. Wow, Patrick, you're really good at this. I don't let anything distract me. Oh, a bee! Oh, 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 jelly bees! <laughs> Okay, let's get into the mistakes. Well, the mistake. There's only one in this episode and it's like really bad. Roll the footage. Oh, I think the party's over. Over? 
is just getting started. <laughs> Well, we've seen your invitation. This one, it's really easy to like not catch the mistake, guys. Even me, when I was looking for this one, I had a hard time. But during this exterior nighttime shot of the barn, when this tractor drives by and everybody is supposed to be dancing, the characters dancing are not actually looped correctly. It's supposed to be like a smooth loop where they dance and it just keeps on repeating. But as you can see right here, I'm showing it in slow motion and I'm zooming in. The loop is just off and it looks really weird guys this was a bad mistake and we have more let's head over to another episode do not click off the video when mr krabs finds a hole in the crusty crab in the episode the drive through he comes up with a very good idea from a business perspective he turns the hole into a drive through thus offering customers a new drive through option at the crusty crab as you can imagine though, like most of Mr. Krabs' changes to the Krusty Krab, this doesn't go very well, when both Spongebob and Squidward struggle to keep up with all of the drive through orders. Well, during this scene, there's a mistake, as when Spongebob is seen carrying a good 15 orders out to customers, there's something going on with his leg, as it's incorrectly colored as white for about a fraction of a second. It isn't that big of a deal, but it looks pretty weird. Six orders up. No, 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 not that window, the other one. Squidward, are you sure? When a nasty storm hits Bikini Bottom and pretty much traps SpongeBob, Squidward, and Mr. Krabs and the Krusty Krab in the episode Pull Up a Barrel, Mr. Krabs decides to tell some Navy Day stories to help pass the time. As you can imagine, Squidward and Spongebob aren't very interested, but Mr. Krabs' story follows a young Mr. Krabs, and is fairly entertaining, so rather than spoil it, let's just talk about a sneaky mistake. In this episode, every Spongebob character has their own counterpart, and if you look at Sandy's, she isn't wearing an air helmet. As you guys know, Sandy is like a squirrel, a real animal, she isn't a sea creature, so she would be drowning right now because she's not wearing the air helmet. So definitely a mistake, a weird one too. Here's a clip. Join me, Krabs. We'll rule the seven seas together. I can't let you go, Les. I'd be in violation of the naval code. Enjoy your last meal. I hope you like sponge sugar. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Our first mistake can be found in the season 10 episode, Mermaid Pants. This episode has a bit of a weird plot, I'll be honest, with Spongebob and Patrick playing superheroes, while Mr. Krabs and Squidward play along, playing as supervillains. Honestly, it was nice to see Mr. Krabs and Squidward goof off and have some fun for once. But the animators must have been goofing off as well. During this scene, as you can see, Spongebob is dressed up as Mermaid Man. He looks pretty dope, and he's wearing green gloves. This is important. Look at those gloves, all right? They're right here on his hands in this shot. However, when Spongebob puts his hand on Mr. Krabs' shoulder, like seconds later, his gloves have just magically disappeared. It looks really weird. They return right after, but damn, Talk about a weird mistake. Are you sure about this? Is it robbing a bank against the law? Well, yes, Mr. Krabs, but you're not really robbing a bank. You're just pretending to. And then we can play? Yep. Oh, okay. Ahoy! Anyone home? It's Captain Taiwan! Aw, oh, look at him. Ain't he a doll? He's going through the door. <laughs> <laughs> He's knocking on the door. He's Squidward dancing the door, and... He's beating up Squidward. <laughs> so first up is the classic episode, Frankendoodle. I love this episode. Shout out to Doodle Bob over here. This guy's crazy. This man's a menace. Now this episode has a ton of mistakes, but keep your eyes peeled for this first one. Roll footage. Be careful with that thing. <laughs> Funny doodle. No, 
now it's my turn. Okay, so I already know that this one is going to need some explaining. So here's the thing. When SpongeBob and Doodle Bob are in SpongeBob's living room in the initial shot of the TV, the images next to it are just shots of barren landscapes, as you can see here. Then in the next shot, they randomly change and are now images of Patrick, SpongeBob, and the pineapple respectively. Then they change for a third time and now they're just solid colors. And then for the fourth time they change, they just go back to the images of SpongeBob, Patrick, and pineapple and then guys believe it or not in a fifth shot they go back to the solid colors so this back and forth happens multiple times and pretty much just as you can see these shots over here just constantly change really weird mistake let's keep it rolling though and head over to another episode our first mistake can be found in the season two special shanghai an episode that i highly recommend by the way this episode gave the flying dutchman some much needed character development with the spooky ghost playing quite the major role for once. He had already appeared before this, but this episode gave us a much better introduction to his character and personality. Now, this episode is pretty good in terms of mistakes, but there is one. At the end of the episode, SpongeBob, Patrick, and Squidward are turned into fruit and are put in a blender. And as you can see, this blender has a cable or wire attached to it that would be plugged into the wall for power, obviously. However, in the very next shot, this cable has just magically disappeared. It's just not there anymore. So this was definitely a mistake. Here's a clip. But why have we been turned into fruits? Hey, I get a wish too. Fruit prevents scurvy. Another awesome season 3 episode with a hidden mistake is Idiot Box. Now during this scene, at the ending of the episode, after Squidward and the box have been thrown in the dump, and we see Spongebob and Patrick come out to find their box is gone, take a look at Patrick's house, because something's missing. The path, normally leading to Patrick's house, as you can see in this image, it's normally right here, is missing in this shot of Idiot Box, which is a really weird mistake. I mean, it's Patrick's house, what the heck? Here's a clip. Hey! Our box is gone! Oh well. I know! Let's go see Squidward! I hope he's not too down in the dumps today. Next up is the episode Tunnel of Glove, which is a Glove World episode. I love Glove World episodes. Like, it's hilarious that in the SpongeBob universe, they have an amusement park or a theme park that is all about gloves. But anyways, here are some clips from this episode. It's a pretty good one. Sorry, only two per car. You'll have to wait for the next car. Any single riders, come to the front. Excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. Please keep your arms and legs inside at all times. And do not leave the boat until the ride is over. Thank you. Um, Pearl, your arm. It's outside the boat. <sighs> I will put my arm in the boat. But don't touch me, don't talk to me, don't even look at me! Pants to get a kick out of this ride, don't you think? I mean, he's so tough on the outside, but he's got a soft side, too. You know, this one time I was upset because my snail Gary, he was sick, and he let me leave five minutes early. Isn't that the sweetest thing you've ever heard? Like I said, it's a pretty good episode. It's not the best, but it has its fair share of moments. It also, though, has its fair share of mistakes, too, to be exact. And here's the first one. Keep those eyes peeled. Let's see if you guys can spot it without my help. I'll just fearlessly lead the way. Dreamers, fool! There aren't any snakes, so stop whining so we can look for a way out of here! Okay, Pearl, you've made your point. I'll stop talking about ogres and vampire batfish and sharks and SpongeBob! And I won't talk about zombies! So this one is really easy to miss. It took me a few times to catch it, but here's the thing. When Pearl puts SpongeBob down, take a look at this as the ropes in front of them disappear before they were there, as you can see in this shot. But when she puts SpongeBob down, they just disappear, which makes for a really weird animation choice. But hey, there's more than that. Here's mistake number two. Ah! Okay, okay. 
okay? I think I hurt you. I will not sit on anything else. I'll just gingerly lean on this wall. Oh, huh? No! Wow, how romantical. I imagined it bigger. Now this one is kind of complicated to be honest, so listen closely guys. Throughout this episode, we see this sign that says animatronic override. Okay, take a look at it. As you can see, override is spelt as O-V-E-R-R-I-D-E. -E. There's two R's in the word. I mean, I don't need to teach you guys spelling. I do need to teach the SpongeBob team spelling though, as throughout the episode this changes, as in this scene, it's missing one of the R's. In this shot, as you can see, it has the two R's, O-V-E-R-R-I-D-E, -E, but in this shot, it only has one R, making for a mistake. And guys, I've got some spicier ones coming up, so stay tuned. Let's move over to episode number three. When it comes to his job at the Krusty Krab, Squidward is pretty darn lazy. I mean, not only does he often hate being there, but he's also always looking for ways to slack off and falling asleep. Well, that is, until the episode Employee of the Month. In this episode, Spongebob gets his 26th consecutive Employee of the Month award, and wants to get his 27th, but this results in a very competitive rivalry between him and Squidward, with them both resorting to some cheap tactics to get the win. Heck, at one point, Squidward traps Spongebob in a damn cage. But anyways, onto the mistake. During this scene, where Spongebob and Squidward are racing to the Krusty Krab, there is a mistake with the door. Okay, this one's a little complicated, but normally the handles of the Krusty Krab door look like this. They're golden or brown, the handle, the part you grab to open the door. However, seconds later, when they go into the restaurant, the handles are now clear and look nothing like they're supposed to look like, so yeah, definitely a mistake here. To be fair, it's season one, but definitely a mistake. Here's a clip. Money, money, gonna make some money. Mrs. Puff, are we feeling any better? I see you got the flowers I sent. Yes, I'm allergic to them. And you. Let's head over to season eight for this next one. I'm talking about the episode Demolition Doofus. Here are some hilarious clips from this episode. It's a funny one. Okay, drivers, let the destruction begin. <laughs> I can't look. Wait. Yes, I can! Ah! Uh, what the hey? Ah! What? This is not going well. You know, SpongeBob isn't a very good driver, as we've seen over the years, but I guess that kind of helped them in this episode. But anyways, here's the first mistake. Let's see if you guys can spot it. Here's a little hint. It has to do with this character right here, Incidental 41. So what do you say, Captain Nudefish? Will you enter him in the derby? Look out, extra credit. Here I come. Welcome to the Bikini Bottom Demolition Derby! The Cruncher! So this admittedly is another nitpick, kind of, but it is still like a blatant mistake. But as I said, Incidental 41, right? So take a look at this scene right here and take a look at Incidental 41's lips. As you can see, they're like a pale yellow. Right here, I'm zooming in, remember the color of those lips. But then in the very next scene, literally seconds later, poof, take a look at the lips now, they're blue. I doubt Incidental 41 randomly went and put like lipstick on or something. This was just a weird mistake. First, they're like pale yellow, as you can see here, and now they're blue. Like what? What happened? The same can be said for this next mistake right here. Let's see if you guys can spot this one. Oh dear, I think I'm in that fellow's way. Engage turn signals. Hands at 10 and 2, and finally, Flora! 
This one is really, really easy to miss, but take a look at this. As you can see, SpongeBob lifts up his left leg to floor it, all right? He lifts up his left leg. But then, like, in the next shot, his right foot is shown on the gas instead when it was his left leg that he, like, lifted up. Not that big of a deal, kind of a minor mistake, but it's still a mistake, and guys, I've got another one. Check out this. This is Pop! What should I- Why are you still alive? Put it in drive! Thanks, Mrs. Puff, you're the best! So take a look at this guy right here, the cruncher, all right? I don't want to mess with this guy. I don't want no beefs with this man right here. But anyways, look at him. As you can see, he has these back fins. It's a part of his design. They're on his back. They're right here. You can see them. Well, when the cruncher drives away from SpongeBob after he drives over him and nearly ends his life, take a look at the cruncher's back as those fins are just gone. They're missing. What happened? Fish don't just randomly lose their fins. So this was another mistake. Mistake. They drew him with fins, as you can see here, but then in this scene, they were lazy and forgot about them. But hey, mistakes happen. SpongeBob, I spent six long months on that painting. Don't worry, Squidward. Shiny's made of silk. We'll just wash it off. There you go, good as new. <laughs> Next up is another quick one, and it's very similar to the mistake we covered in the episode Planet of the Jellyfish. It takes place in the episode Bubble Buddy Returns. Here are some funny scenes from this episode first, though. Guess he's not home. Oh well, we can try again later. Wait, Shiny, where are you going? Squidward, this room is so full of sharp, jagged, broken things. This is no place for a delicate little bubble boy. There he is. Don't worry, I'll save him. Jagged glass, barbed wire. Cactuses! Cactuses is protected by barbed wire! Gotcha! No, guess not. He's headed right for my glass menagerie! Hmm. Hold still, Shiny! I'll get you down! Gotcha! Of course. Dude, it is so cool seeing Bubble Buddy return. This dude debuted back in season one, two, or three, so it's awesome to see him back. What isn't so awesome to see, though, is the mistake in this episode. Roll the clip. Uh, perhaps this letter will shed some light on your origin. My old friend, Bubble Buddy. Wonder what's up with him? Could you please watch our sun shiny until we get back? I owe you one, your pal Bubble Buddy. Oh boy, did you hear that, Gary? They want me to watch Little Shiny. Yeah, so just like that mistake back in Planet of the Jellyfish, the same thing happens here. As when SpongeBob reads the letter from Bubble Buddy, the spots on Gary's shell swap colors. Like seriously, look at this. This is incorrect. I'm gonna do another side by side. This is how Gary's shell should look, and this is how it looks in this one scene of Bubble Buddy Returns, which is a blatant error. And guys, I've got a couple more mistakes in another episode. Let's head over to that other episode. Let's do it. Plankton is a bit of a miserable person to be around. I mean, he's always trying to pull off some sort of scheme, and honestly, I don't blame a lot of other Bikini Bottomites for hating the guy. To be fair though, he does have to put up with a lot of BS. I mean, his wife is a computer, so I do have some sympathy for Plankton, and it seems I'm not the only one as this is what the episode fun is all about. In this episode, SpongeBob makes an effort to become Plankton's friend. But of course, due to Plankton's urge and addiction to steal the secret formula, this friendship doesn't last very long. Now the mistake in question can be found during this scene. It's a little hard to make out in video, but take a look at this image. For about a frame in this episode, SpongeBob's belt is not only on top of his shirt, but it's also white when it's supposed to be black. I'm gonna show a video version. In the video, it's a little blurry, but as you can see in this image, it's definitely white. Here's a clip. Tartar sauce. Yeah! 
In the very first episode of SpongeBob Season 13, A Place for Pets, Mr. Krabs stumbles across a new opportunity to make money once he realizes that customers are willing to pay double just to let their pets into the Krusty Krab. This quickly gets out of hand though with Mr. Krabs eventually making the Krusty Krab a pets-only establishment, kicking out regular people in favor of pets, and even singing a little song to push the point. And this is actually where we can find our next mistake. It happens fast, but during this song, Mr. Krabs' eyelashes duplicate for a few frames. And damn does it look weird. Remember, I'm talking about his eyelashes, not his eyes. And as you can see, they're duplicated. Yeah, here's a clip with audio. There's a pet who's just like you, just like you, yes! Mrs. Puff has to deal with a lot of crap, especially from Spongebob, one of her worst boating school students. Like seriously, it's been 20 plus years and Spongebob is still failing that boating exam. And don't get me wrong, I love the little dude, but I do feel sorry for Mrs. Puff. Well, that was until I seen the episode No Free Rides, an episode that revolves around Mrs. Puff lying and passing Spongebob on his exam just so that she doesn't have to deal with him anymore. However, this comes with a bunch of guilt, with this decision risking the safety of pretty much every other Bikini Bottom resident. Now, the mistake in question can be found during this scene. As you can see, the word accident is shown on a billboard. However, it's spelt incorrectly. Well, it isn't necessarily incorrect, but it's the Spanish spelling of the word, which is incorrect considering this is the US or English version of the episode. In the Spanish version, it's not a mistake, but in this one, this is actually a mistake. So yeah, here's a clip. And now back to K-R-U-D with all of your personal, you won't get away with stealing my car hits. <laughs> Hey, look! I never let you have this boat. Welcome to our parlor. Hey, okay, a lady can take a hint. Now, as I always say, guys, do not click off the video yet. I'm going to get back to regular SpongeBob, but for one section, just one section, we're going to switch up the flow a little bit and talk about another show in the SpongeBob universe, Camp Coral. It's almost Halloween, so let's talk about the Halloween special, Scaredy Squirrel. It has one mistake. Rule the footage. Sandy, are you asleep? Wake up! <laughs> It's more of a friend emergency. We're gonna have a sleepover at the Trawler Cabin. Oh, but they're so unnatural. Listen up, guys. So Camp Coral is 3D animated. It isn't made like SpongeBob is made, which is 2D animation. So because of that, there isn't a ton of mistakes in Camp Coral. There's only a few. And when there is a mistake, it's actually a pretty big deal. Now, the mistake in question for this episode has to do with Sandy and her hammock. As if you watch closely, Sandy seems to clip through her hammock multiple times. Clipping is when like your arm goes through an object it shouldn't go through. So as you can see here, Sandy Sandy's just clipping through the hammock and it looks so weird, guys. Talk about a mistake. Let's head back over to regular SpongeBob though, guys. I know that's what you really want, all right? Regular SpongeBob, let's do it. Our next mistake can be found in the episode Goofy Scoopers, an episode all about SpongeBob and Patrick's favorite animatronic band, the Goofy Scoopers, being replaced and breaking up. This makes our favorite duo very sad, understandably so. So they set off to find each member of the band and reunite the band, bringing them back together. And hey, spoiler alert, but by the end of the episode, they succeed and give us this awesome scene where they do like a dope performance. It's really cool. Now the episode's mistake is very similar to one we've already talked about today and revolves around our favorite sponge's eyes as when SpongeBob and Patrick are kicked out of Goofy Goobers, there is a single frame where one of SpongeBob's eyes turns blue. As you can see, he's falling into another character that's blue, so this is most likely why it happened, but yeah. Here's a clip with audio. 
Taking us out? We've been coming here since we were kids! Yeah! We're the Goofy Scooper's biggest fans! Well, that's your problem. Closing time. <laughs> you don't have to go home, but you can stay here! <laughs> this stinks. Next up is the episode of Bubble Bass's Tab, which I will admit is a pretty good episode. I love when characters other than Spongebob, Patrick, Squidward, or Sandy get the spotlight, so seeing Bubble Bass get another major role within the series is awesome. I love this little, or well, I guess big dork. Of course though, this episode isn't perfect. I mean, hey, it's in today's video for a reason, with it having two pretty bad mistakes. For one, in the beginning and towards the end of the episode, the Krusty Krab's front doors are shown to be missing. It looks really weird, because there is glass there, but you can tell that they forgot to make it into an actual full-on door like they didn't finish it. Another mistake can also be found during the scene where SpongeBob and Squidward are dancing, as part of SpongeBob's pants cuff turns yellow for a frame, and boy does it look weird. Here's a clip. One large flotsam fries, extra jetsam, four orders of duck weed. How <laughs> they, SpongeBob? Ali. May I? But of course. <laughs> First up is the season 6 episode, Choir Boys. Now, this episode is all about Squidward joining a choir. I'm happy for him because you know Squidward loves to sing, and SpongeBob trying to join him. This episode has a lot of funny moments, especially the scenes where like SpongeBob and Squidward keep trying to clear their throats. Here's some clips. I may not be as good as you and your buddy, Squidward, but I do have a song in my heart that I want to share. <clears throat> I'm good enough to join the Bikini Bottom Men's Chorus, I promise! Yeah. Perhaps Squidward didn't see me. This giant pothole ought to get his attention. Hey, it's a pretty good episode, especially for season six. I'm not the biggest season six fan of SpongeBob, but whatever. Let's get into the mistakes. This episode has two. Here's the first one. Try and spot it. Wow, well, looks like a forlorn SpongeBob lying sprawled across the dirt. <sighs> Oh, what a lovely day for me! <laughs> huh? Squidward, my playmate Patrick is away at a family reunion. Sad and alone, I am desperate for something to do. This one happens pretty quickly, but when SpongeBob lays on the ground and puts his hand on Squidward near the beginning of the episode, SpongeBob's hand can be seen through Squidward's tentacles. Like his hand is through the tentacles, which was definitely a mistake. And here's another one. Stop, 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 stop. I hereby issue you this ticket for reckless rounding and failing to listen to my song. Ah, uh, singing traffic. Oh! SpongeBob, I will be late to practice with all of your tomfoolery slowing me down! Now I love this part of the episode, but as you've seen, it also has a mistake. So when Squidward rips off SpongeBob's fake mustache, um, take a look as one of them is missing their right arm. Like their right arm is just not on screen, which is definitely a mistake. Like how is this dude missing his arm? But anyways, let's move over to episode number two. We've had many weird episodes throughout SpongeBob's 13 seasons, but one of my all-time favorites is season 12's SpongeBob in Random Land. This episode is very odd. 
In this episode, SpongeBob and our favorite squid, Squidward, are sent to Random Land, a dreaded town full of weird creatures where the laws of logic just do not apply. This place is just very weird. Now due to this creepy setting, we get a bunch of creepy scenes. But nothing is as weird as this first mistake, as during this scene, where Squidward says the neighborhood must be affecting my speech, Take a look at his neck, as his neck and body are just disconnected. Like, it's really bad. It's a little hard to make out, but pretty much, look at the collar of his shirt. It's almost like Squidward's neck is behind his body, which is a really bad animation mistake. And that ain't even it for this episode, as later on, when SpongeBob is talking to Roger, Squidward's forehead wrinkles disappear for one frame, thus giving us another weird mistake. Here are a clip of both with audio. Here we are in random land, sure as for that. Mm -hmm. Sure as for that. The neighborhood must be affecting my speech. Come on, let's put our grind to the no stone. Aw, oh, Squidward, can we take a minute to smell and stop the roses? Smell and stop the roses? I mean, stop and smell the <laughs> And I walked all the way from 86 Screwball Street to complain about never getting my delivery. Oh. Your delivery, my good man. Uh, oh, mission accomplished. Uh, Better late than never. Better never. If it's late, it's free. <laughs> Patrick Starr has had many jobs over the years. For example, he worked at the Krusty Krab in numerous episodes, and he was also a businessman in the episode The Executive Treatment. And the episode Patrick the Mailman from season 13 is no exception. In this episode, Patrick takes on the role of Bikini Bottom's mailman, and while he does his best at first, Things do not go as planned by the end of the episode, with them even getting into a little scrap with Kevin C. Cucumber at one point. Now the mistake in question takes place close to this scene, as when Patrick tries to deliver the envelope through Kevin's mail slot, Patrick's left eye is colored purple, which looks really weird when of course it's actually supposed to be white. Yeah, looks really weird. Here's a clip with audio. Oh, oh, oh. oh good, our next stop! A summons for jury duty, Lucky! Special delivery! Great job, Mr. Mailman! <laughs> Oops! <laughs> oh, oh, I love games! Me too! You must know a lot about sports, Squidward. Uh, will you teach us how to play? I'd be happy to teach you all about sports, SpongeBob. The episode Sports is a pretty good episode from season 10. What did you guys think about it? Let me know in the comments. What I know for sure, though, is that this episode has two spicy mistakes. Here's the first one. Take a look. Ah, oh, come on! We came to see some action! See you on the court, your highness. Hey, Squidward! Check! I will admit this first one is a tiny bit of a nitpick, but it's still like a real mistake, all right? So pay attention to this character right here, Incidental 64. As you can see, their eyes are white, all right? Like you can see it right here on your screen. They have white eyes. Well, when Sandy and Squidward are about to play some basketball, when they're about to shoot some hoops, make some dunks. Kobe! While this is happening, Incidental 64's eyes are like a deep murky blue color instead of white, which is totally a mistake. Normally, they look like this, they're beautiful white eyes, but in this one shot, they're like this random color. Again, I'm kind of nitpicking, this is a subtle mistake, but this next mistake in this episode is much worse. Take a look at this. Check. Yeah, so take a look at this shot of the crowd, and you'll notice that there are a ton of duplicates of incidentals, which is super lazy. There is more than enough incidentals, guys, that they could have filled out this entire crowd with different incidentals. But look, this one incidental appears like three or two times in the same shot, which is very lazy, but let's keep the video moving and head over to, yet again, another episode with more mistakes. Speaking of Pearl, the episode The Algae's Always Greener also has a mistake featuring 
using our favorite whale. I feel bad saying that, like she's a whale and I feel like that's kind of rude to just call her a whale, but she's literally a whale, so yeah. Now in this episode, Plankton and Mr. Krabs swap lives. So this means that Plankton becomes Pearl's dad temporarily, and we even get this picture of them together. This is where we can find our mistake though, as not only is the letter P, what we just talked about, the letter P missing from Pearl's shirt when it should be there, but her iconic heart-shaped lips are also missing, thus giving us two mistakes in one scene. Man, I love season three. I'm gonna show some clips of this mistake, but before I do, let me know in the comments what your favorite season three episode is. Such a good season. What happened last night? Huh? What's this? Mr. Plankton? Who the Davy? Huh? I'm in the Krusty Krab. SpongeBob SquarePantus! You must wear the ancient crest of your ancestors, for it is your birthright! My birthright! Let's take this to the Bikini Bottom Museum. They'll know what it is. Next up is Atlantis SquarePantus, and this is personally one of my favorite SpongeBob specials. It's hilarious. They go in this like van that takes them to Atlantis. At one point, they even go into a video game. I'm gonna show the mistakes, but take a look at this really cool scene of them in the video game. Let me out of this thing. <laughs> What's going on here? I oh. No. Ah! Squidward, don't make any sudden movements. Help! Ah! Yeah! Dude, that's really cool. It's like really cool animation too that they did a shot like this. But what isn't good animation is the four mistakes in this episode. To be fair, the episode's almost an hour long, so it makes sense. But anyways, here's the first mistake. I was wondering if I could get a peek at some of your scientific achievements. Of course, Miss Cheeks. Look at all this high tech gear. What does this gizmo do? It's a biomass converting device. It can take any household object and turn it into, say, ice cream. I can show you the most amazing slash fantastic device. Behold, this grand machine allows the user to be broken down to nanostature. How's it work? Please have a seat and I'll explain. So just like Truth or Square, this next mistake revolves around Sandy, all right? So let's take a look at her design again. As you can see, Sandy always has this like square icon on her suit and it's always yellow. Well, in Atlantis Square Pantis, when Sandy says, how's it work? That square around the acorn on her suit is white for some reason. When as you guys just seen, it's supposed to be yellow. Here's like a side by side. Yeah, that's a mistake. And here's one that's twice as bad from the same episode. Take a look at this. Prophetic! I'm Patrick! I'm Patrick! 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 Uh, 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 I don't know what I like. Hey, look! It's a Atlantis. Pretty. Yeah, did you guys catch that? Because this one is like really brutal. So when everyone is at the window after Squidward says, look, it's Atlantis. SpongeBob's left leg is just missing. It's kind of hard to see. I'm zooming in and circling, dude. Yeah, his left leg is just gone. It's a cartoon and mistakes happen, especially in 2D animated cartoons. But how do you forget to draw a character's left leg? There's no excuse for that one, man. But let's keep it moving. I've got more mistakes from Atlantis Square Pants. Here's mistake number three. So many weapons. How do I choose? Look at this one. What a beautiful view. Eedy, meedy, mighty mo. I pick you. Now let's go. Don't let them get away. <laughs> <laughs> This next one has to do with Plankton's arsenal of weapons. So when Plankton finally picks up his weapon, as you can see, it's red. Remember this, okay? It's red. But if we watch as the scene progresses and it gets to this point where he stops everyone in their tracks, it's now green. Here's another side-by-side. -side. At first it was red, but now it's green. Weapons don't just change colors randomly, guys. Like, I mean, it looks cooler green. I mean, but that's not how it works. That's totally a mistake. And there's 
one more from this episode. This one is also pretty rough. Take a look at this. Is this some kind of joke? Where's the gas tank? Huh? The engine of this vessel is fueled by song. They're gone. Now to get to those weapons. Looks like I found my escape route. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! Listen closely, guys, as this one's kind of technical. Now, when Mr. Krabs is trying to put gas in the bus, there's no exhaust pipe, all right? This is a big point in the episode right here. There's no exhaust pipe. They're also told that the bus uses singing as its fuel, so it doesn't need gas, and there is no exhaust pipe at all in this van or this bus, right? Well, then explain this, as later on, we see Plankton literally climbing out of an exhaust pipe of the van or the truck, which is totally totally a mistake. They literally said that it doesn't use gas, so there wouldn't be an exhaust pipe on the bus, guys. This is just another mistake. This one's kind of funny, too. It's like, what? But let's keep it moving and head over to another special. Mr. Krabs can't always be there to manage the Krusty Krab, and we see this struggle in the episode Boss for a Day. With Mr. Krabs being forced to put good old SpongeBob in charge due to our favorite greedy crab getting into a little accident. Now, I do like this episode, but the plot is very similar to previous episodes, so I did find it a little lazy. But worst of all, I also found a dirty mistake. During this scene where Mr. Krabs returns back to the Krusty Krab, Mr. Krabs actually duplicates himself for a split second when SpongeBob opens the door. And damn, does this one look like really bad. Here's a clip. Guess if I want a boss like Mr. Krabs, I learned to think like Krabs. In the season one episode, Sandy's Rocket, Patrick makes a major mistake. When him and SpongeBob sneak into Sandy's Rocket and Patrick accidentally starts the engine, thus sending them into space. Well, it turns out they never actually even went to space. They just crashed back into Bikini Bottom and begin capturing Bikini Bottomites thinking that they're aliens. Eventually, SpongeBob starts believing that his best friend Patrick could also be an alien. It's really funny, but let's head back over to this scene for the mistake. When Sandy is showing SpongeBob how the net gun works, she blows on the bubbles coming out of the gun. But this, again, wouldn't be possible due to her wearing her air helmet, so she wouldn't be able to like, you know, she wouldn't be able to blow on the bubbles, so another mistake. Here's a clip. Oh, hush, silly. This is for harvesting moon rocks. Well, when you're done playing with rocks, you can use that for some serious alien hunting. Aliens? Are you not- I'd say so far, one of my favorite season 13 episodes has been Food PBFFT Truck, an episode all about Mr. Krabs starting up a Krusty Krab food truck so that SpongeBob and Squidward can bring in more profit. It's a pretty cool business idea. And hey, at one point, we get a nice hit of nostalgia, with SpongeBob and Squidward heading down into rock bottom. This is where we can also find a mistake, though. As most of you know, SpongeBob is drawn with four fingers, and has always been drawn like this since season one. Four fingers, right? But for some reason during this one frame, SpongeBob has five fingers, and boy oh boy does it look weird. To be fair, this isn't the craziest mistake we've ever covered, but it's still pretty weird. Here's a clip. Well, we tried, let's go home. Huh? <gasps> a customer! Step right up and get a del delicious, hot, fresh. Huh? Krabby Patty? A rye sandwich carved entirely of driftwood? Mama Mia! Oh, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. Mmm, <laughs> smells industrial. Time for a somewhat spooky episode of Spongebob. I'm getting you guys ready for Halloween. I'm talking about Seance Schmeance. This episode is pretty good, but I'll let you guys be the judge. Here are some clips from the episode. We can't eat anything. Why are we here? On this night, 
we shall make contact with the unliving. By performing a seance. As consort to the spirit world, I now commence this seance. I shall invoke the specter of Rusty Ricketts. Rusty Ricketts? Hey, what'd you think? Let me know in the comments. Let's keep it moving, though, and get into mistake number one. Roll the footage. Help me out, sir. Could you clue me into what was in your beloved Rusty on Rye? Huh? Well, let's see. Um, I think it was on rye bread. Uh, Only what's uh, on the menu, old timer. This ain't no kind of way to treat a loyal customer. <gasps> no! no. <laughs> Mr. Krabs! There was an unsatisfied customer. This one's pretty simple, and I'm sure some of you guys caught it. But when SpongeBob goes running to Mr. Krabs' office, there is a massive spelling mistake on the Galley Grub menu. So Krabby Patty is normally spelled as K-R-A-B-B-Y-P-A-T-T-Y. You can even see this on other shots of the Galley Grub menu from previous episodes. But in this episode, it's misspelt, with Patty being spelt as P-A-T-T-I-E. Now, this is a fairly common mistake in Spongebob. It happens at least once or twice every season. But come on, guys. That's not how it's spelt. And let's keep it rolling, guys, because I have another mistake. You better have a darn good reason for getting me out of bed, boy. <laughs> that good enough for you? So as you can see in some of these shots right here, canonically, the Chum Bucket and Krusty Krab have always been like across from each other. But when Mr. Krabs and Patrick stand in the front door of the Krusty Krab, um, the Chum Bucket is just not there. It's like completely missing. It should be across the street like this footage here. But in this shot, poof, it's just gone. Hello? No, this isn't the Birdman of Bikini Bottom. Who is this? Yo, mama. Well, listen up, Joe. I hate to break it to you, but flying is impossible. I have to go now. My head just hit the ceiling. Huh? Hey, look, Gary. I, I think I'm flying. Season 3's The Sponge Who Could Fly is another banger special. It isn't as long. It only takes up like 20 minutes or so, but it's still really good, even despite the mistakes it has. Take a look at some of these funny scenes from the episode, and then we're going to dive right into the mistakes. There's three in total, so be prepared. They're pretty rough. I wasn't even close with that last one. Propellers, rudders. This one's going to fly! I can feel it. <laughs> it's working, Patrick! I'm flying! I'm flying! Okay, baby, it's mistake time. Here's mistake number one. Let's see if you guys can spot it. Well, it was fun while it lasted. I guess I'm not meant to fly after all. Huh? Huh? I guess it just goes to show... You don't need a plane to fly. Listen closely, Grapple Gang, as this one is kind of confusing, and you need to not only listen closely, but you need to pay close attention. So during this scene, SpongeBob's walking, and we can see this little horde of jellyfish behind him, like following him. Now, eventually, some of these jellyfish help SpongeBob fly, and he starts lifting into the air. But remember that horde of jellyfish, right? If we watch closely, just as SpongeBob is rising into the air, that horde horde of jellyfish in the background just randomly disappear. They don't fly away. They don't fade out. They literally just disappear. And it looks really awkward, guys. Like, look at this in slow motion and you'll see what I mean. It's rough. You know what's also rough, though? This other mistake from the sponge who could fly. Take a look at this. Did 
Did you guys spot it? Well, in this scene, there's a bunch of these like mini little SpongeBob's, okay? They're very cute. But at one point, they all start running around in a circle. And if we slow down the footage, we can see that one of them completely just disappears for a frame. They pop right back in after that one frame, so it's not that big of a deal. But I'm pausing again and look at this. Dude is just gone. Here, even take a look at it again in slow motion. Dude is there and then he just disappears and pops back in. It's more funny than anything, so. But here's one more mistake from this episode. Launch air with balloons, fly away, inflatable pants. You may as well scoop. It's hilarious, but in this scene, there's a funeral for SpongeBob's inflatable pants, all right? He loved those inflatable pants so much that he put on a funeral for them. But look closely and you'll notice that there are two incidental 41s in one shot. Now, in the past, when I do duplication incidental mistakes, some people will like use this logic that there's multiple of one incidental. But to be honest with you guys, that's not actually how it works. There is over like 200 of these incidentals. Like, look, I'm showing the Wikipedia page. Look at how many of these that there are. Whenever they're duplicated, it is a mistake, guys. It's not supposed to happen. It's the animators being a little bit lazy. But I mean, it's understandable when you're animating a 2D show. Like, it's a lot of work. So I completely understand it. But just to those people who think these aren't mistakes, they are mistakes. There is only one incidental 41. So yeah, let's keep it moving. Our first mistake can be found in the season 12 episode, Sandy's Nutty Nieces, an episode all about SpongeBob volunteering to babysit Sandy's three triplet nieces. Unfortunately for SpongeBob though, while the three mini squirrels are super cute, their personalities and behavior is quite the opposite, with them constantly misbehaving and getting SpongeBob hurt or in trouble. Now this episode isn't bad, but it definitely isn't my favorite, so I don't feel bad exposing this subtle but weird mistake. As during this scene, where the trio greets Rosie while in the bouncy house, there is a single frame where the inside of Macadamia's mouth is the wrong color. As you can see with her sister, this is how the inside of a mouth is supposed to look, with it being red or pink. So the coloring of Macadamia's mouth was definitely a mistake. It looks pretty weird. Here's a clip with audio. Uh, have a nice trip back to Texas. Bless their evil little hearts. Oh. Oh, no. Hiya, oh. In this episode, fishermen have come to Bikini Atoll and have casted their hooks into the ocean to see what they can catch. Mr. Krabs warns SpongeBob and Patrick that these hooks are very dangerous and are not to be messed around with, but of course, they don't listen. Now, to be honest, this episode is pretty light in terms of mistakes, but I was able to catch one. At one point in this episode, Mr. Krabs says that nobody has ever taken a break at the Krusty Krab since the Chum Famine of 59, but this is a continuity error due to the fact that Spongebob had taken a break seemingly with Mr. Krabs' permission during this scene in fun, and was even sent home in the episode Suds when Mr. Krabs learned that Spongebob was sick. So yeah, this line was definitely a continuity error. We've seen Spongebob take many breaks before, so yeah. It's a feeding frenzy, sir, and Spongebob's not back from his break. <laughs> Why? I thought you said SpongeBob was taking a break. No one's taking a break at the Krusty Krab since the Chum Famine of 59. <laughs> now, what were you saying? He took a break. I haven't seen Plankton for a while. He must be scheming. Who knows? Maybe he's changed. Who knows? I think you know! He's changed, I tell you. Sponge ya. Buddy! Yoo-hoo! Plankton Buddy, let's go. I forgot this is a no-friend zone. SpongeBob! 
We've had enough of your little tests, Mr. Krabs. Come on, Plankton, let's get out of here. Maybe the lad was right. And last but not least, our final mistake can be found in the episode Farmer Bob. In this episode, Mr. Krabs makes SpongeBob work at Old Man Jenkins' farm. The reason why is because Mr. Krabs owes Old Man Jenkins a lot of money, and you know how Mr. Krabs is when it comes to money. So, instead of financially repaying Old Man Jenkins, Mr. Krabs gives him free work through SpongeBob. Now, the mistake occurs when Mr. Krabs throws a sack at SpongeBob. If you look at this shot here, you can see that SpongeBob is weirdly missing his tie. It just disappears. It's not that big of a deal, but yeah, it's missing. Hey, Boyo! <laughs> they should help you with your work! <laughs> And last but not least, our final writing error comes from the Season 11 episode titled Squid Noir. In this episode, Squidward loses his clarinet, which causes Squidward to go on a detective-style mission to find it. It's pretty cool. After questioning almost everyone in Bikini Bottom, Squidward eventually finds his clarinet lost in jellyfish fields, and he happily retrieves it. Now, from here, the episode ends with Squidward playing his clarinet, and it not only attracts, but also pleases and makes Jellyfish happy. However, if we head back to Season 2's Jellyfish Jam, we learned that Jellyfish hate Squidward's clarinet playing, and will actively attack him if he plays, so yeah, I guess the writer of this episode hasn't watched Season 2, go watch Season 2. I'm going to show a clip with audio, but before I do, you guys know the drill. Shout out to the Grapple Gang Baby. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and if you're at the premiere, shout out to you even more. Say something in chat. By the way, if you're new to the channel, though, and you want me to respond to your comment, make sure to subscribe, as I'll be responding to the comments of all subscribers on this video. Only if you're subscribed, though. YouTube will show me if you're subscribed, so yeah. Anyways, though, here's those clips. I'm a Cartoon Cory, and I'll see you guys again soon. I love you guys. Peace. Squidward, yeah! Yeah, Squidward! And that's how it ended. Clarinet returns, case closed. Another mystery solved by Squidward Tentacles, Jazz Detective. Wait, wait, I can turn it down. Ah!